so this week I played a couple games at home. Uh, one was with my son here. Can you bend down, budget, so the camera can see you? Bend down like this. Um, and uh, the reason he got to play a game is because he pooped on the toilet. Did you poop on the toilet? And what game did we get to play? Innovation, that's right, we played with. Who played Innovation? Um, my father. Mama, yes. Mama, Father, and Ren. And he requested that game because he, he watches Mama and Father play Innovation sometimes, and he wanted to play. And we've always had the deal if he poops, whenever he poops in the toilet, we'll play a game. And we've gotten to do that a couple of times. Um, but this was very special because we actually played a, a regular game of Innovation. I think the only rules change we made is I. Uh, we just didn't end the game when it should have been won. Um, so I got every single achievement in the game because Nellie wasn't so on her game. Uh, she was kind of, she was very tired and I don't know that it felt like an official game to her because Ren was involved. But Ren, Ren played by the rules. Um, we sometimes had to like stop him from doing things, but uh, definitely he, he's into it. Um, yeah, so I got every, this is, I'm going to brag a little bit, I got every single achievement, one through nine, and I think the world, no, the universe, I forget, I got one special achievement, and then after that I blew up everything with um, some atomics, and then we just decided to, to end the game. So a lot of fun, we played Innovation, didn't we? And then I played, who came over last night to play a game? Did some people come David. over? David! Yep, we had... Sarah? Yep, two people came and we played uh, How We Came to Live Here, which is a story game, a role-playing game that I've talked about in the past. But um, we, we actually started playing this time. Got, it took a long time to get started because someone was very active. Were you very active? No. Yes, you were. Um, he's more comfortable with them now because they've been over a few times, so he is um, more energetic and active. Um, he's not so comfortable with you, however, so he's being a little bit more suppressed, correct? Look at the house. Yes, they came to the house. And uh, it, was a, it was a lot of fun. We only played um, four scenes. Um, the first scene I set up as a, as a marketplace um, because I've been playing a lot of Crusoe's Planet. So I just kind of was like, the first part was like people trying to trade some things. But then it quickly moved into... Um, the uh, the story and actually I'm gonna leave you with Ren for a second because I want to get the papers that we actually worked on. Ren, talk to the camera, but don't touch it. Yeah. So uh, our people they live in the Red Sky Village, which is um, it's it's in a holes in a mesa uh, that people live in and on the ma top of the mesa is the farmland that the people have um, so there's when you start the game you have several um, issues that that the, the village is having to deal with like everyone comes up with one and so we have there's these mist weavers who are um, this outcast sect of spirit talkers so spirit there all the all the pretty much everyone is involved every adult anyway in the game or in the villages is involved in these secret societies and they kind of run everything, the secret societies, and they, they're called kivas. They're, and they, they uh, meet in holes in the ground, basically, these kind of underground cavern type places that are um, human made. Um, and so the, spirit, the mist weavers are this outcast sect that they, they breathe this mist that's wrecking the crops. Um, so that's one issue that's harming the people and then there's also this red the water the river that the people get the water from has turned red and then um, we didn't deal with this issue but or there's these sandstorm mixed with segments of dismembered sand serpents raining down on the land that didn't happen um, but that's something that could happen next time um, and then there's also the billow men and they're these small creatures that um, that give you um, inaccurate compliments and make you kind of addicted to this praise for things that you don't deserve. Um, lots of interesting characters. Uh, I'll just let you look at it. Here are all the characters that we kind of came up with as NPCs. You come up with the village and the NPCs and stuff as you go, but also a bit um, to start with. Uh, 
and you take turns like coming up with people. And then there's two heroes, which um, my wife and another lady were the two heroes of the game. And uh, so each person takes turns set, setting scenes. And we started off with the, the marketplace and people were kind of like started talking about all the problems. And then, um, then we went into uh, Akiva, the, one of the characters is a spirit talker. And so there's this ceremony and then uh, to try and contact the spirits, you know, and talk to them about what was going on. Um, there's three people involved in the ceremony. The character who's kind of the... Okay, I'll get more water. You talk to them. Anyway, very good scene um, because the, the like the mist started coming out of the fire, and this was it, like a lot of the play was just we we really didn't use um, except for you know taking turns setting scenes. I, we didn't use a lot of rules. Um, we were all just kind of put in things as it seemed, you know, as we had ideas, and it was just flowing very well. Um, so the mist came out of the fire, and it was like the mist that was destroying the crops. And it went into a, a non-player character, this, this spirit talker who, um, something about stars was the name. He who catches stars. Um, and he, his, his like ability to talk to spirits has to do with how many people are asleep and dreaming. And um, he does this kind of augury by looking at stars. Anyway, the mist went into this, this character's mouth. It's a male, because all the spirit talkers are males. Uh, everything's gender, least, ge uh, gender segregation in this community, um, and then he's kind of went crazy. Uh, and anyway, I won't I won't go through. It's, I don't know how interesting it is to hear about someone else's role playing session, uh, but it flowed really well. And then the final scene, I was like, let's let's have a conflict, <laughs> and decided to use dice. And it really so I've been using the dice system for this game in the seven by seven ages game and I have to say it really helped make it flow better all that practice just doing the dice for that um, so great fun after that we played a game of princess which is interesting I was kinda of the disbeliever this time um, partially and, and the trouble happened again at the tunnel so um, the, earlier in the game there's a dog right that you have to pass and it got bypassed by putting glasses on the dog to disturb its sight uh, so that we could sneak by. Um, then later on at the tunnel someone wanted to, there's also a dog item card that I got from the Granny's House game. Someone wanted to use that dog to get through the tunnel but I I was the disbeliever. I thought since we had established that if dogs can't see they can't their other senses don't compensate um, you know with the glasses that we couldn't then do it with the tunnel and then we started to get some night but we had a good um, well there's no real good or bad group for princess, but we won anyway, so that was good. I, how did the princess... The spell was broken by just pouring hot wax on her, which is a little less arcane than usual. Uh, but that woke her up, and we played a great game of princess, so that was excellent. There's some, some tension in there, but also some success, some magic, some um, believability, and my son's moved away, so this video is over.